Hi, it's Dr. Beggs from Malmesbury Science. And I just want to show you uh, a little bit about how to do a good biological drawing. Uh, biological drawings are something which uh, many people think are rather belong in the dark ages. Because why would we need to draw what we can see down the microscope when actually you can photograph now what you can see down the microscope or have what you, you can see projected onto a screen? Biological drawing, however, isn't about just showing what it is that you can see. We've got cameras to do that. But biological drawing is about observing what you can see. And there's nothing quite like actually committing what you can see down the microscope onto paper. So this skill is not really about your drawing. This skill is about observation. So can you look down the microscope, see something, make genuine observations about what it is you are seeing, and then commit them to paper to show that you've thought about what you are actually seeing? So I'm going to demonstrate what I think is good biological drawing. So the first thing, you need to have white paper. It's got to be white paper. You can't draw on lined paper. You need a sharp pencil, ideally a HB. And you need to think that your drawing is going to be covering at least half of the piece of paper. Now, you don't have to draw everything that you see down the screen in order to be a good drawing. What we want to do is to probably draw about four or five cells. So what I'm going to demonstrate is the classic first slide that you make at A-level, which is the onion cells. And I'm just going to concentrate on drawing about five cells and showing that I have observed how those cells are linked to each other. So on the centre as I look down now, I can see a central cell, which is the one I'm going to start with. And I can see how it interacts with the other cells. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that centre cell. Now, I was actually taught as a student myself not to look up, but that's a little bit tricky, really. So I'll keep looking up and looking at my paper to keep checking that I'm doing the right things. So the first cell that I'm going to draw is roughly an oblong cell, but I do notice that it's got a second cell interacting with it from one side. So I need to put that interaction on. And to make sure that I don't forget that interaction, I'm going to draw that interaction in now as well. So now I need to think, how long do I need to do this line? And now I've got the side of the cell. Well, why is that like that? Well, that's because that cell is interacting with two other cells. I'm going to show that as well. And now I'm going to work my way back up. And as I get towards the top, I can see that there's another interaction with another cell at this point, And then I can follow through up towards the top. So what I've drawn is not a stylized onion cell. I've actually drawn the onion cell, which is in the center of my view. I've actually shown how that cell is interacting with the other cells. Now, I'm not going to claim that at this magnification I can see the cell walls, so I'm going to leave each cell just with a single pencil line. You might notice something else about my pencil lines. Smooth, continuous pencil lines, not sketch lines, and no spaces unless there really are spaces. So all of these cells are intact, and they're all interacting with each other. So that cell is complete. I'm now going to draw its neighboring cell, and that cell too will be complete. But what I notice is as I come down about halfway down, there's a little nick there where it interacts with the next cell to the side. Now I'm going to carry on down this cell. And actually, to be honest, this cell is, more or less, except for those little details, a rectangular cell. It is the cell that it interacts with, which is of slightly different shape. So I'm going to carry this one down, but I'm not going to do the entire of that one. I've no need to. I'm going to carry this one down, and I'm going to finish off this cell because it too has that nice little nick to the side. But look at that end wall, that last end wall of it. It's not straight, it's at an angle. Now I'm just going to finish. I've got three intact cells. I'm just going to finish this cell up here because it's got quite a nice shape. It's a nice interesting cell. It's got that nice little nick into its cell wall where it interacts with this one. And now if I follow this cell up, now I notice that this one has got a very angular top wall before it too comes back down. And it hasn't actually got any unusual shapes on it to interact with the others. Now I've drawn four cells. I recommend you draw between four and five cells, no more and that you draw the neighbouring cells in sufficient detail to show how each cell is interacting with its neighbour. But you don't need to draw any more than that. Notice the size. 
I've taken up more than half the sh sheet of paper just with those four cells. Now what else can I see? What other detail can I see down here? Well, I can see the location of the nucleuses. So I'm not going to put them in randomly. I'm going to put them in actually where I can see them, down the microscope with these cells. Can I see any more detail at this magnification? No. So I'm not going to put any more detail in. I can't see the double cell walls. I can't see the cytoplasm. All I can see are the nucleuses and the cell walls. That is sufficient. That actually is a good biological drawing because I can see on the slide where those cells were and I have observed how those cells are interacting with each other. That's the skill that's being tested here.